So my first impressions of all the new PlayStation VR 2 headset is overall very good. It feels nice to wear is not heavy or uncomfortable. The visuals look good on the one cable setup isn't bad at all. Hello everyone this THA unboxing room. We are a box in the PlayStation VR 2 headset is gone. OLA display 120 Hz. Refresh rate motion sensors, haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. We'll get this unboxed and set up, and then we'll go over the features of the headset and controllers. So it actually launches on the PlayStation 5 on February the 22nd. But there are four black circles on the front which make up the cameras. These are used to view your room as you play. So we not only provides an AR experience when needed, it will make it easier for mapping your room to avoid walking into things. It also has an AI proximity sensor built in and looking around at the buttons on the ports. If we flip it upside down first, you'll see we've got the power button in the middle. If you tap and press this, it will turn it on and off. Next to that, we have a microphone that can be used for voice chats as well as some voice related functions. It's kind of very similar to the DualSense controller and how that works with its built-in mic. Now this button is called the function button. It basically swaps your view between in-game and O, so you can see through the screen tap in. It shows you your surroundings in black or white. So you can see where you are in the room. Then on the top part we have the scope adjustment button pushing. This lets you pull the front part of the headset away from the rear headband. And on the other side is the lens adjustment dial. This is used to change the position of the lens or the screens as you're wearing it. It'll help keep everything in focus by either making the lenses wider or narrower than all the inside of the headband. You'll see we have a 3.5mm headphone port. This is used for the stereo head headphones that were included in the box. All you need to do is plug the headphones into this port and you can actually wear the headphones as you're gaming. And then when you're not using them instead of unplugging them, you can actually mount the earbuds in the side of the headset. You look inside the headset, you'll see it's got two lenses. These are two LED screens with a resolution of 2000 by 2040 in each. I and I'll tell you what, the clarity is incredible. It's also got a field of view of 110 and a refresh rate of between 90 and 120 Hertz. Dependent on what you're playing now, image and sound quality is always going to be subjective. And as for comfort, while on the inside, it's got this rubbery material which is soft and flexible. They do a great job of molding it around your face, but I can't imagine it getting pretty grubby over time. Then around the back as they strut. Now some VR headsets come with a ski goggle-like design, but on first impressions, I much prefer this. It feels more sturdy and secure. Plus it is easier to just see was a hard plastic frame with a really soft foam-like material on the inside. Adjusting the fit and comfort for the headset is done with three simple settings. First, there's the scope adjustment bottle, which allows you to adjust the distance of the screen from your face. Then around the back of the headband, this is white dial. If you press the button in the middle, this will allow you to adjust the headband size by pulling it out. You can pull out as far as you need to slide over your head from here. You can slowly release the bond until it is snug on your head and then you tighten the band by twisting that white dial. And now all you need to do is tweak the focus of the lens or the screen. That's why you need to spin the dial on the top until the screen is in focus or sharp as you can make it a next stop order to controllers. So these are called the GPS VR two sense controllers. If you're not sure which is which, there's a little Allen R on the inside of the handle. Now, first impressions of these controllers as they feel incredibly well designed. I mean, sure, most other VR controllers look very similar, but the weight and placement of the buttons and triggers feel natural and ergonomic, plus the overall design with the black and white theme. Look, right, which works in the same way as a dual sense controller. Each controller is nearly identical in terms of the shape and button placements, but the left one has a triangle and square buttons, whereas the right side has a circle and X button. These are in a great position for ease of use along with the two thumbsticks, which are easy enough to reach. These are also clickable, so they act like a normal L3 and all three button. The other differences, the left controller 
has a shutter button which allows you to save clips and photos while the right controller has a menu button. Flipping it around, you'll see that we have the left and right triggers the L2 and the R2 for your index fingers along with the equivalent bumper buttons, or the L1 and R1. You'll likely use these with your middle finger to control these instead of your index finger. And these buttons back here also have a finger touch detection built in so we knows when your fingers are placed over the top of the buttons before you even press it. Oh, and as for the grip itself is nice and soft and, well, pretty grippy. But it also is made up of these tiny little PlayStation icons inside the grip. So you can only just about see these, but they are there if you look for them. And inside the controllers includes haptic feedback. You're getting the rumbles of vibration as you interact with objects or weapons. And if you look very closely at the bottom of the controller, there's a little LED light on the frames, you know, when they are powered on. Now, both of these controllers connect via Bluetooth and they have built-in rechargeable batteries. So when they need charging, you can use the provided USB-C cable. However, there's only one included in the box. The problem with this means you need to alternate between the two when they do need charging. Or you can do as I have done, which is to buy the dual charging dock. Unfortunately, my won't be here until launch day, but that's going to be the easiest way to charge them. Now when it comes to getting the VR to set up is a pretty straightforward process and only takes a few minutes to do. The first thing to know, although it might seem obvious, is that you do need a apps 5 on a monitor or TV to set up the first time, and then you will need to have it plugged into a five hour. All times for it to work. So firstly, take the USB cable is connected to the headset and plug it into the USB-C port on the front of the PS5. Press the power button on the underside of the headset and you'll be prompted with any available updates running through the on-screen settings. It will ask you to plug in the Sense controllers into the PS5 one by one and then once that's installed and powered on, you'll be able to run through the settings to get your room and space set up. If you move around the room, it'll map out and find a safe area for you to stand and play. Then once you've done that, you'll be able to adjust your space using the controllers. So this is pretty neat and is easy enough to do. And what you're using the VR headset, you can actually swap between the game view and the live feed for you just by tapping the function button on the headset. This gives you a live view of your room using these four cameras on the front of the headset. This is useful if you need to grab something in your room or you want to make sure you're not going to walk into something.